Okay, so what I do is I teach how to squat. Now, an athletic position is always squatted right here, right? So we're right here. So technically, I'm not rounded. If you guys see my back, that's rounded, okay? I'm not fully uh, too extended. So I squat. This is an athletic position, okay? That is involved in almost every single sport, hands down, okay? Maybe the only sport is like water sport because obviously there's no gravity in your water. Um, so most people squat. And I'll tell you right now, the number one people who do this most of the time are basketball players. Okay, basketball players always want to squat with their knees over their toes. They shoot in front of their foot because when they shoot, that's how a lot of them shoot, right? What that, what, where's the stress going though? And you need to think about it. Well, okay, well, where's the load supposed to go in a squat? You know, is it supposed to go right here in the front of your knees and your quads? No, it's actually not supposed to. I get a lot of athletes who say, you know what? You know, I got knee problems and my knees hurt. Or, oh, my quads are really sore from squatting. They're really, really sore. My, I don't feel anything on my hamstrings and my glutes. Which, your hamstrings and glutes are, you know, really vital, especially for increasing speed. They're vital. Your quads are important too, but a squat is to properly develop every single aspect of your muscle in your leg. Actually, really your whole body, okay? Because it's requiring core stabilization again, pulled up top. So let's say Dosa right here. Dosa is going to be a good example of a bad squat, okay? So turn. Dosa is going to squat with his knees over his toes, okay? Go ahead. So his, see his knees are, well, you did successfully. <laughs> so his knees are over his toes right here. So he's going to feel a lot of strain right there. Everyone sees that? Here, stand up. Get up on here, dude. Okay, so when he squats, right? Go ahead. He's going to squat. His knees are going to come over his toes. You're going to feel all here, and then you're going to hit quad. This is what happens a lot, okay? And a lot of fitness places will allow this. A lot of athletic places will allow this. I'll give you a real life example. Some of you guys know what CrossFit is, right? How many of you guys know what CrossFit is? You guys know what CrossFit is? They'll allow that, okay? I I'm telling you right now, they'll allow it, all right? I've seen too many athletes that I've worked with. I've seen too many athletes. I've talked to too many strength coaches that have athletes who have come from CrossFit or have tried CrossFit. I mean, some of you guys might like CrossFit in here, so I'm not trying to scare you away from me or anything like that, you know? But they allow certain things of this nature. Okay, this will lead to injury. I guarantee it. I can guarantee it over and over and over again. And you will not increase performance. Okay, so Dose is going to squat. His knees are over his toes, right? So this is something that you'll see a lot of people will constantly do, constantly do. They, they're just, that's what they do. They can't figure out how to do that. So athletes or coaches and, and other trainers, just stare at there for a second. Make me stand up. Uh, <laughs> trainers and stuff, they will not actually, they won't, they won't change it. They will not change it. They don't progress in, into a squat. They'll let somebody come off the street and back squat, which is when you put the bar on your back. That's probably the stupidest thing you could ever do, okay? Because they're not developed enough to actually do that. There's a proper progression in order you, for you to actually be able to get into that back squat. When I first came here and went to the football team, we took squats, or I took squats out all together. We did not squat because they were so tight that everybody who squatted, squatted down and then they went like this. And this is what they looked like, okay? And they looked like this. This is literally, they looked at the ground because they couldn't do it. So all this did was lead to more back injury, okay? Another example, you could even took it, or take it a step further and think about football. They had a lot of concussions that first, that, the year before I got there. Well, why? If you can't squat and hit somebody, if you can't squat and hit somebody, where are you going to hit them with? If you can't hit them, if you can't squat and hit here, you're going to drop your head every single time. It's not your fault, you just can't actually sit down. So if you don't correct it, well then what? What are you gonna do? You're gonna hit them with the top of your head. You're gonna lead and slow down and boom. Now you gotta you know, you get knocked out, get a concussion. Those are some of the things that will actually translate to the sport. But anyways, back, so now, how do we learn how to squat? Well, everyone wants to sit forward. So now, I'm just gonna make them actually sit down to the chair. Naturally, you know how to sit to a chair. You do it every single day. This is what we do more than anything else. So whether you're an athlete or just a regular person, you squat. So you're going to sit down to the chair. I make them sit over and over again. Usually, I'll make them hold a broomstick or a bar over their head. It's called an overhead squat. Okay, and we sit down. We just sit. That's all we do. We're just sitting. That's it. Okay, and they learn. You just all of a sudden, then I progressively will allow them to hold weights to their sides. Or I let them eventually, I'll move them away, and I'll let them squat, but if their knees go back over, I'll move them right back down, and I'll make them sit down again. 
Okay, and I'm going to make them do that until they get it. Because there's just that little bit of an angle is going to make the difference between performance and injury. Performance and injury. Then we'll transfer from this into a front squat. Usually I do not make them hold the bar yet because most people have a problem, uh, problem with it and then they worry about this. So they round down when they squat. So I have them hold dumbbells. Okay, if you go, again, I'm not, but if you go to the site, if you go to functionalmustfitness.com, you can look at one of my, and it was one of the first exercises I put up was a dumbbell front squat because it's not utilized enough and people need to utilize it because then you all of a sudden you'll learn how to do it, uh, how to squat correctly or you have a better chance. Okay, so then we get away. Then we have dumbbells, we front squat. We sit down, okay, our knees never pass our foot. We learn how to sit. We start to feel the transfer of the load differently, okay? Then from there, I might put them in a back squat. Maybe. Dependent on their, like, the level of where they're at with their core, you know, after reading some other exercises on their core and things like that. But what I'm going to show you real quick, this is the most important thing of a squat. And I'm going to show you the, the difference. This is how little, like, if you don't pay attention, this much, an inch, is going to make the difference between injury and performance. Or activating the correct musculature of a squat. So those is going to squat incorrectly. Okay, now I feel pressure right here on my knee. Now all he's going to do is transfer his weight back into his back half foot right there. Okay, now his knee is not actually over his toe. Okay, so it's not over. It's right there, but it's not over. But guess what? If he goes this much forward, he's now in an incorrect squat. If he goes this much back, he's in a proper squat. That is an inch. And if you don't know that inch, you're going to squat incorrectly every time. Okay? But the difference is the over the over is right here. Okay, stress to the knee. If he sits back, it's glute and then or it's glute and hamstring. Okay, and then you're also getting your quad developed as well. But you're actually gonna properly balance yourself of your squat. But that's a little like just think about it. That this much makes the difference. Do you know how many people in the industry miss this much? But if you don't actually pay attention enough to your clients and to your athletes to actually care enough then you're going to miss it every time. Now when you train a team, it's a little bit harder. If you train 60 people and you're one person, how are you going to see everybody squat? How are you, you cannot watch everyone's rep. You can't. It's impossible. So you start to ask your players who you know can actually handle it to do it. Or you ask your assistants, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have assistants that are qualified or just, you know, they understand what you're looking for, you know, they're going to help you out as well. Okay? But like, that's some way that honestly, Right here, this is just very, very simple, okay? And I'm not even going to get into the whole, like, again, I could talk about CrossFit and how they allow people to do this, which is probably where they go like this. This is how they squat and they shoot their legs out, okay? Um, I can point athletes out who are at this school who have been in CrossFit and have already have injuries, especially to their ITs, because they've learned to squat like that, okay? So I can go over the whole thing, and there's a lot of other ways to think, but oh, you're good. Thank you. Um, but I just wanted to kind of like show you, that's kind of how you have to think. That's what goes on in your mind when you're training someone. The little details of that, or even knowing how to progress them up. Again, you know, with, with the ab, prob, uh, ab program that we put out, it's a progressive program that climbs people properly into a, a higher level of basically fitness or athleticism. So you're able to get up and you climb up progressively, progressively, progressively. Therefore, you're not leading to injury. Because that is really what it comes down to is probably the most important thing with strength coach, personal training, anything. is really not injuring your person because, or injuring your client. Because no matter how talented you are as an athlete, as an individual, if you're not on the court, or you're not on the field, or you're not in the pool, or you're not able to move, you know, you're, you're, it doesn't matter how athletic you are, you're not going to be able to use it. Okay? So... Uh,